Okay, a question that I get from a ton of you is where do I start if I want to start a podcast? And I love when answers are simpler than we expect them to be. So I wanna tell you about a resource that's changed the game for us with our podcast, and that is Spotify for Podcasters. If you wanna start your own podcast, Spotify has a platform that makes it so, so, so easy. You upload your episodes and then Spotify actually distributes it everywhere onto all platforms and even helps you earn money so that it can be profitable for you and a blessing for you, your family, your people. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast literally from your phone or your computer. So if you don't have a fancy setup, it's okay. You can immediately get started today. Then again, you distribute it to Spotify and everywhere else that podcasts are available. You can also do video podcasts, which sounds like a dream to me. And when you want to take conversations with your people to the next level, you can do Q&A and polls, all sorts of fun things. You can earn money with ads and podcast subscriptions, or you can just get started using what you've got for the good of others and the glory of God. Check out Spotify for podcasters. I use it. I love it. I highly recommend it. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app. I have it on my phone, highly suggest, or go to spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started today. You're listening to the Go and Tell Gals podcast, and I'm your host, Jess Conklin. In most of our episodes, we'll have a guest, a woman who is running on mission right where she's at. We pray this podcast leaves you encouraged and spurred on to go and tell the good news. Hey friends, Jess here at the Go and Tell Gals podcast. Today, we are ending our three-part coaching in quarantine series. We started with talking about cultivation and approaching this season, approaching this time in our lives and in the lives of our country and our communities with a sense of cultivation. We said we don't want to just dominate it. We don't want to go in and be like, I'm going to crush this. I've got this. It's going to be incredible. I'm going to take it over. I'm going to win. But we also don't want to passively just let it happen or resign to the things that are happening around us. So what does it look like for us to look down at the ground that we've been placed in, in this time, in this space with the weaknesses, the limitations, the strengths, the abilities, the capacities, the lack of abilities that we have and cultivate, grow what's around us and allow ourselves to be grown in this season. What does it look like to cultivate? That was session one. Next, we moved on to really ascertaining, perceiving, determining what our gifts are in this season, particularly, and using them for the good of others and the glory of God. If you haven't listened to that second podcast, I want to encourage you to go listen to it. We talked about some of the the things that get us tripped up when it comes to using our gifts, comparison and striving. And so now is a really good time to press through, press past a lot of those things that may have kept us from using the gifts that God's uniquely handed us to serve and love others. I want to encourage you to listen to that. But today I want to talk about something totally different. I want to talk about catching a vision for right now, catching a vision for the future. What I mean when I say catching a vision is I mean getting Holy Spirit empowered insight from God that will empower you and encourage you to empower and encourage others with what you've got. So I essentially mean, well, I'll say it even shorter. I mean, hearing from God, getting some direction from God that will help you do this season in a more life-giving way. What does it look like for us to hear from God? I don't want to overcomplicate it. The biggest thing I don't want to do is I don't want to overcomplicate it. I don't want to make it sound more magical or more confusing than it needs to be. I believe that as daughters of the King of Kings, I believe that those of us by grace through faith who are in the family of God, we get to hear from God. We get to hear from God through reading scripture. We get to hear from God through our dreams, 
we get to hear from God through writing or listening to different songs and things being stirred in our hearts. We get to hear from God by having conversations with people who edify and encourage us and exhort us to do different things. I think there's a myriad of ways that we hear from God. We're all very different. It looks different for each of us. But for me, if something lines up with the word and the character of God and it encourages others and brings him glory, I'm going to call it him. I'm going to call it catching a vision from him. So let me say what this looks like specifically. If I get an idea that I want to make cookies for my neighbor in this season, and I know that that would bless them and it would bring him glory for his people to feel loved. I'm going to call that. I caught a vision from God that I was supposed to go make cookies for my neighbor. Now I might not say it like that when I delivered them. Thank you for these cookies. Oh, you're welcome. I got a vision from God that I was supposed to give them to you. I'm not going to say that because it's just that routine and that normal that we hear from God, that we get direction and insight from him. And so it's okay if we're not making a huge big deal out of it every single time. But some of us do have this desire and this ability. I believe we actually all have the ability. I, I think that some of us have a harder time accessing the desire to go to him to ask for themes or wisdom or insight about seasons at large times of our life as a whole. And we get to go to him and say like, what is this about? What are you doing here? What do I need to know? What specific instruction do you want to give me? Now he might not tell us every single detail. I am in the camp that says he probably won't. I think he's mysterious and big. And I think if he told us everything that he was doing all the time, we'd be wildly overwhelmed. But I do think he gives us insight. I do think he gives us vision. I do think he gives us direction. And I absolutely think that this is a season that we get to go to him and say, what are you doing? What do you want me to be doing? How can I be serving other people? Where do you want me to look right now? Where do you want me to pay attention? Where are you growing me? Where are you shifting me? What are you doing? What can you tell me? I think this is a great time to go to him and ask for that. So here are just a few thoughts on what that looks like right now. Here's the first one. For so many of us before March, 2020, before quarantine hit, before anybody started sheltering in place, when we imagined a vision for our life, it included some version of a stage. Now, here's what I mean. I don't mean that all of you pictured yourself on a stage because for a lot of you, that would be terrifying <laughs> to be on any kind of a stage. But I mean that when we imagined our life, when we imagined a vision for our lives, we often imagine us at our absolute best. We imagined our ideal selves. We imagined ourselves winning. We imagined ourselves in this sort of perceived state that was probably never going to be all that probable. We imagine the best life now version of ourselves when really what we are working with, what we're still working with every day is this now and not yet saint living in a fallen world reality that's a lot messier and needs a lot more of the gospel. So I want to tell you something that I'm incredibly grateful for in this season, and that's that for most of us, we're not picturing the stage version of ourselves anymore. Those of you who are stay-at-home moms, you're not picturing the tidiest version of yourself anymore because that is gone. We don't have time for that. There's not the capacity to do that. Those of you who are ministers of the gospel, it's probably a lot harder to picture yourself in some kind of fame or glory spot in that because right now you are so attuned to the needs and the problems of your people and you're seeing how much of your energy it's just taking to meet those needs. Whatever this looks like for you, for so many of us, the stage is gone. The stage is over. The stage is killed. We just have to use what we've got. We just have to serve other people. We just have to step into our callings and our giftings because the time is short and the situation is dire. And I just want to say, I think that's a good thing. I think we need to pay attention to that and ask in Jesus name for God to help us to move forward and not rebuild the stages of our hearts. I think we need to move forward and say, I don't want to go back to idealizing that ideal version of myself using my gift. I want to keep this messy picture of how it's actually probably going to look so that I have a more realistic perspective about how God wants to use me and how he will use me.
if you've never caught a vision for a season of your life, or if you never asked God for any kind of specific vision or insight, I want to encourage you to think through a few of these things that may make up a vision for your life. I love thinking about a combo of these few things. Number one, who we want to serve. Who's on your heart? Who do you want to help? Who are you worried about? Who are you concerned about? The second thing, what are you burdened for? What's really messing you up right now? What's keeping you up at night? What are you spending a lot of time dreaming about how you could make it better or how it could be better? And then lastly, I think a great vision includes some part hope, some part belief that things will, can, and should shift for the better moving forward. Because here's the thing, if we have a particular people group that we want to serve, and we even have a burden of what's wrong and how it could be fixed, but we don't have hope, we will get stuck in a cycle of defeat. And we will have a very hard time encouraging, loving, serving those particular people. So on that, I want to talk about a few vision killers, a few things to watch for in your heart and your mind as you move forward in this season and moving into the next. Defeat is a big one. For me, the voice of the enemy sounds the most like defeat in my head. It's always going to be this way. You were never going to do that well. Here we go again. Why is it always like this? This isn't going to work. Those kind of defeated messages I find myself maybe speaking to myself, nobody else even has to say them. And that voice of defeat is such a vision killer. But let's even speak more specifically to those of you who might speak defeat into your ability to hear from God. Maybe you say, he doesn't talk to me like that. You don't understand my life's not like that. I'm just more simple. I'm just more normal. God doesn't do that for me. He doesn't give me vision. And I would say, really? Are you sure? Is there some reason that you perceive that he treats you differently or gives you less than he would give what he promises to give his kids and in so much of the scripture where he says, ask me for wisdom and I'll give it, ask me for insight and I'll pour it out. I think he loves you. I think he wants to talk to you. I think he wants to give you vision. Another big vision killer in my book is doubt, honestly. And I don't think that that means we should stuff all our doubts or pretend like we don't have them. But I do think we have to watch when doubt becomes a louder voice, louder than the voices of truth or hope or encouragement or exhortation. If you're listening to a lot of doubting people right now, it may be time to turn them down. Does this mean that we ignore reality? No. Absolutely. Does this mean that we stick our heads in the sand and pretend like everything's going to be fine? No, but there's a fine line between speaking truth and speaking reality and speaking absolute doubt, doubt into the truth that God loves us, that he has a good plan for us, that he's going to make a way for us, that he still heals, that he still hears his people. These are things that we want to speak truth and hope and belief into. Lastly, a big vision killer that I want to just encourage all of us to watch right now is blame. And this one, I think a lot of us might not see coming. But when our minds and our hearts are busy blaming other people and noticing all the things that they do wrong and that they're doing to break our world or make it harder, it is very hard for us to go humbly and boldly into the throne room of grace and ask for a vision. We're just so distracted by blame and we're just so distracted by frustration that it's hard to go with faith and hope and love and ask him for what he wants to give us. So pay attention to those vision killers. Are defeat and doubt and blame being so loud that you don't even have time to hear or perceive the vision, the insight, the wisdom that God may be wanting to give you for this season and for the next? Here are a few just quick other pointers about vision and what it looks like to get one for this season and for the next. Number one, go back to the last thing God told you to do. Did God give you a word of the year? Don't abandon it. Did he give you some instruction or some encouragement or some purpose statement for 2020? I know that the situation has changed, but don't you think that he knew this was coming? And don't you think he might have given you that word, that instruction, that encouragement on purpose? 
What would it look like for you to move forward, taking the last thing you heard from him and seeing what it looks like to obediently fulfill that in this season? Go back to the last thing God told you, even if the circumstances had changed, even if the medium or the way that you live it out looks a little bit different. Secondly, I want to encourage you to phone a friend. This is an incredible time to fight emotional and relational isolation. When we can't be physically together, phone a friend, call a friend and say, listen, I am on a hunt to get vision from God about this season. And next, will you pray with me? Will you pray for me? Can we pray for one another? Can we talk? Can we dialogue together about what we think he might be doing and how we can encourage each other in that? This is an incredible time to fight defeat, isolation, fear, and all the things that would keep us from growing closer to one another and perceiving just how close we already are to God. I think a great way to catch vision in this season is to start asking What are the needs going to be when our world starts turning again? When places of businesses begin opening again, when people start returning to work and to church and to school, are there going to be new needs? Are there going to be new places where you can use your gifts? Are there going to be new vacuums that need to be filled with encouragement or life or something that you've been given? What do you think people are going to need and what would it look like for you to meet some of those needs? I just think this is an interesting question to ask. I've been thinking about it a lot as it pertains to my church and coaching and books I might write. We can't discount just answering logical questions and believing that God will be in the vision of answering those questions as well. So I want to encourage you to think about that. Next, I want you to start asking what you might want to take from this season. Is there anything that you've learned? Is there anything that God's shown you? It can be as small as a certain rhythm that you've now started doing. Maybe it's walking your dog. It could be as big as writing. I've had time to write and I want to keep going. It could be small. It could be big. It could be a rhythm. It could be a routine. It could be a verse. It could be a spiritual practice. It could be a relationship. It could be a business. It could be a dream. What do you want to take with you? from this season into the next. That's a huge part of catching God's vision. Next, I want to encourage you to use this season where things are different, where rhythms are off, where patterns are off, not to get ahead, not to dominate, not to crush it and and kill productivity, but you can use this as a testing ground, a testing and a tasting ground for different things you might want to do with your life. I have a friend who's testing out to see if this is a good time for her to go freelance because she can't do her normal job. It's a good time to experiment with different gifts and different hobbies and see, is this right for me? Will this work for me? What could I be doing differently? Again, this isn't something you should feel the pressure to do, but if it would be life-giving for you to use this opportunity, to use this moment, to perceive what could be the most life-giving situation for you as we move out of it, why not? Why not give it a try? Why not give it a shot? Why not see if you can perceive where you're most needed and where you find the most joy, whatever that looks like for you. Here's my last encouragement to you. As we move forward throughout the rest of this day, throughout the rest of this incredibly strange and difficult season, and as we move into the next, I want to massively encourage you to go be with God. Hebrews says that we get to walk boldly into the throne room of grace, and I want to encourage you to do that. Spend time with God. Go on a prayer walk. Put on a worship playlist. Sit in the silence, read his word, do whatever it looks like for you to spend time with the God who created the universe, who loves you, who longs to give you wisdom and insight, who wants to talk to you, who wants to communicate with you. Go to him, listen to him, see what he has to say. He's a much better communicator than I ever could be. He's a much better coach than I ever could be. And I know that he will give you exactly what you need. 
I love you, friends. This series has been so good. Next week, we get back to interviews, and you're going to hear from some women about what they want to take from this season, what they're taking into the next, how they're hearing from God, and I can't wait to begin to share those with you. I love you. Grace and peace to you. He is mighty in you. See you later. Thank you.